In this demonstration, we are going to show how to use the script called Doctopus to assign work to students in a class, and then we are also going to pair that with a Chrome extension called Gubric to provide feedback with a rubric that has already been created. So there are a couple things that we have to have set up beforehand. The first thing is, in a Google spreadsheet, you need to have your roster. Um, you may already have this. Some people like to just make a generic roster and use it over and over again. So in this case, I've got first name, last name. It's very important that you have a column for the student email. And then over on the side, these are some optional ones that we're not going to cover in this video, but you do have the ability with Doctopus to assign to groups or to put into individual folders. But we'll get to that in another video. So that's the first thing we're going to have. The second thing to do this is you have to have the Gubric extension loaded into Chrome, and that's this little guy right here. To get to that, you would go to the Chrome Web Store type in Gubric, and then I already have it loaded, but otherwise you would click on this button right here, and then that would be loaded. And Gubric only appears when you need it, and it appears in the Omni bar. So that's just you know something to keep in mind. It's not going to show up with the rest of your Chrome extensions. And then last, we need to have a rubric already created. So I've just created a very simple rubric just for this. So with Doctopus, what we're going to do is we're going to assign out basically a template, what will end up being more like a template file for the student. So I have already have a file pre-created here and ready to go. So we're going to assign that to the students because Gubric works with Doctopus. If you don't have one, you can't do the other, that sort of thing. So we are going to go to Tools, and we need to go to the Script Gallery. In the Script Gallery, we are going to type in Doctopus and hit the Search button. You'll see there are two versions of Doctopus. I tend to use just the plain version. We'll click Install. You will then have to authorize the installation, so you'll click Continue. You will then scroll down to the bottom and click Accept. Once that has occurred, you will see Installed show at the bottom, and you can go ahead and close that pop-up window. Doctopus now shows up in our menu bar. So I'm going to go ahead and click that, and I'm going to go ahead and say Launch Installation. So Doctopus the Wizard will run you through all the different setup options that you have. So the first thing we're going to do is select the sharing type. So you can see here we can share everybody with the same or different. We're going to keep it simple, and we're going to share this individually. Everybody gets the same. You can set access, so the rest of the class will have no access. We're allowing these individual students to have edit access. If you wanted to adjust that, you could. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at edit. If you wanted to include other people and give them rights, you can enter that in the column right here. When we get to our roster settings, we want to make sure we're on the correct sheet. In this case, we only have one sheet. The column containing the student email address, by default it chose student email, but if you needed to swap that, you could go ahead and do that. And then columns containing excuse designation, right now you can just leave that as group and that will be fine. If you were having to put this in individual folders, you could check this and move on, but we're going to keep it simple for this demonstration. Go ahead and click Save Settings, and Doctopus will begin to run. All right, so our next step is we have to find the document that's the template document. So I'm going to scroll and find where I have saved this. So I've put it in my script trial folder. I am now going to select the file that I want, so it's this document number four and I click Save Settings. Now we get to step three, I need to choose a destination folder, and if I don't do that, I can just create a folder for this specific assignment. So if I wanted to have this land in a certain spot, I could choose that. I'm gonna go ahead and we'll just, we'll just say create folder named right there. Now, how do I wanna name this file? You can see I can use some of the variables up there. So let's say I wanna go ahead and I'm gonna use the last name portion of that. And I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in there. And I'm going to just say assignment after that. So what this will do is it'll take the student's last name, put that in there, and then put the word assignment after it. So you're basically, you're you're kind of giving it a formula for how to name everything. If you want to set up notifications on this, you can check the box. We're going to go ahead and just kind of leave that as is and go ahead and click Save Settings. So at this point, we can review all of our options. Once that is set and we're OK, we can say Run Copy and Share. 
now that we have assigned everything out, students can now work on that assignment, but at the same time, we can go ahead and we can start giving them feedback. And we do that with Gubrick. So in the spreadsheet, if I go up to Doctopus here, I want to attach a Gubrick. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And so basically what this is doing is I am attaching a rubric that um, the Gubrick Chrome extension is going to access. So I'm going to select a rubric, and you can see it has to be in a certain format. So I have this saved. I'm going to wait for it to come up. There it is, rubric number one. And I'm going to go ahead and say select. It's showing me here is what this rubric looks like. If this is good, I can attach this Gubrick to the assignment. Now I can go ahead and score this. So one of the other options that you can do in Doctopus is if you want to embargo for grading, you can actually cut off access um, from the students from working on this. And so maybe you go ahead and do that while you're going to go ahead and you know grade this or give some sort of feedback. So we're going to go ahead and say OK. So now I'm going to go to back to my sheet one. And so I'm going to go into this assignment. Whoops, there we go. It's taken care of. We have fully embargoed um, the assignment. You can see here they, um, they're they locked. This is locked for grading. So I'm going to go ahead, click on this, and go ahead and open this up. And it's going to bring me to the assignment. So they have put some text in here. They have done their assignment. Now it is time for me to provide feedback. So up in the Omnibar, I can click on the Gubrick icon. And it's going to search for that attached rubric that I put in here. And so now I can go ahead and score this. So maybe I'm going to put a 3 and a 2, and I'm going to add some comments. Needs improvement. I can also email this to that student if I want to. Right now I'm just going to go ahead and turn that off. And I'm going to do Submit and Paste to Document. All right, so you can now see that that has been added directly to the document. So the cool thing about this is that student could come back in. They could go ahead and make some changes. And now you do have the ability to rescore this. So if I come back and click on the Gubrick icon again, it's going to recall that same rubric. But maybe now I can up their scores a little bit because they've made some changes. I could also keep the ones that were there, or I can just add new. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, great job. Not the best example of descriptive feedback, but gets the job done. And I can submit and paste to a document. All right, once it is saved, so if I scroll down here, you will see now the second rubric has now been added. So this is where if you are, even if you're doing something on a summative level, you could be assessing students throughout in a more formative manner, and you can assess them multiple times. And then when you're all finished with this, we could go ahead back here, and if I wanted to, I could undo the embargo so I could let students see this again. But I also want to take you to the rubric scores tab. And you're going to notice right here, we are seeing the scores for that assignment. So here I can exactly see what comments I made, things like that. So if I want to transfer this over to a grade book, I could go ahead and do that. So that is Doctopus with Gubrick.